Hey guys, Jason here, Jason's 310. No fanfare, no titles, just gonna jump straight into it. Look at my 2022 mid-year operating costs. Um, I know you guys are always very interested in that kind of thing. Uh, you might be asking, well, it's mid-June when this video comes out, shouldn't you wait till the end of June? Well, no, because I don't really have any more trips planned until July 4th weekend, so let's go ahead and crank this video out because I'm been pretty busy here recently. So uh, the big story this year is fuel prices and we'll get into that in a second. So as far as hours flown, I, I always budget for around 100 hours a year. I've flown about half that. I've flown 48 hours. Uh, half that was a trip to San Diego and back and a trip to Colorado and then I've done just numerous trips here within Texas. So I've flown 48 hours so far this year. Again, fuel prices is the big thing, inflation and fuel prices. The average price that I've paid so far this year from January to June is $6.79 a gallon. The previous year was $5.31, and remember that's average. It's really spiked here um, this summer. And I'll just add this as well. I tend to go into big, busy airports as opposed to the sleepy small town airports with cheaper fuel, so I am paying a premium for fuel. Um, on the chart here, you can see to the left, uh, so the, the vertical axis is price per gallon, and then the x-axis, the, the bottom axis is date, so it goes from January uh, to June. The big gap there at the start of the year is when I had the avionics upgrades done. So right at the beginning of the year, I paid $5.20 a gallon once on one trip. And now here recently, I've been paying around $7.75 a gallon. Maintenance, uh, pretty under control now. My annual was $81.73. Um, that's, I think, I think in one of my previous videos, I said that annuals were, were on average no squawks or you know, with, oh, well, I can't remember what I said. I, I, I don't want to speak out of term, but I think I said like $7,500 is like a, a, a good ballpark to start off with for an annual. And I've had some people in the past comment and go, oh, you're getting ripped off because you're paying $7,500. No, these are million dollar airplanes, really. They're complex. If you're getting a proper annual done where everything's getting serviced and your gear rigging's getting checked and everything, it's going to be at least a minimum of, $7,500. So um, if you're spending, I think one guy once said, oh, my annuals are costing me $3,500. You're living in a false sense of security that your airplane's being properly maintained. Uh, I had uh, the new autopilot and panel upgrade. I don't include that in my operating costs. That, that's an upgrade. Um, we built new panels. I've got a video on this that I put out uh, a month or so back. I've got new panels, a new s -Tech 3100 autopilot, a second G5. Um, we just moved a bunch of stuff around, cleaned up the panel, got rid of the eyebrow lights, and it just, uh, everything's working great now. It uh, is definitely worth spending the money on that. Uh, just randomly, mid-year, also I've had some uh, fuel leaks uh, around my right tip tank. Um, and that took, that was cost about a thousand dollars. That was nine hours of labor plus some sealant cost to open that up and reseal around some of the uh, dome nuts inside. So there's fairings that screw into the side of the fuel tank and on the inside of the fuel tank, there's little dome nuts that have sealant around them. So when you put the screw in, it doesn't uh, go into the fuel tank, so. And then again, another random thing, my, uh, VOR antenna on my vertical stabilizer just failed. That's probably 30, 40 years old. It may be the original one. I think the uh, avionics shop guy told me it looked like the original antenna and it has some plastic um, parts on it. And I think they just, after decades of sitting out in the sun, it just finally uh, failed. I heard a kind of loud bang while I was flying along and I thought, what the heck was that? It kind of actually scared me. And I looked at everything, nothing, Nothing wrong on the uh, on the fuel flow and everything, you know, the engine monitor, everything's normal. Uh, turns out when it failed, the actual antennas went back and kind of slapped up against the 
aluminum skin on the vertical stabilizer and made a, a bang and that was it. Then they just kind of flew in trail until I landed and fortunately I was at my home airport and, uh, and uh, you know, it's a pretty simple fix. Just pop the old antenna off, the fairing off, put the new antenna on, so. So total fuel spend uh, this year is $7,730. Again, that's for just shy of 50 hours of flying. To put it in perspective, last year, uh, this, this number's already almost 70%, 69% of last year's spend for the total year. So, um, you know, the, it's definitely fuel prices are, are, are more expensive. Average fuel burn of 23.3 gallons per hour. That's just taking all my fuel receipts and dividing it by the hours of flown uh, that have flown. So it's 23.3 gallons per hour because I fly high, um, uh, get that down pretty low. And then uh, the fuel cost per hour is $161. And last year it was about 122, 123. So again, you know, you can definitely see the effects of, of higher fuel prices. Total maintenance spend, so the, the fuel leaks, the annual, the antenna, around $11,000. Uh, hangers, 3900 so far. And I don't list my insurance on here because I pay it pro router through the year. But I actually got a discount this year, and I'll tell you why. Um, I went to uh, aircraft simulator training in Burnett, Texas. Huge fan of this place. So it's all in simulators and they really teach you how to handle emergencies. And it's not just engine failures. We did all sorts of emergencies like stuck, stuck flaps and uh, you know partial power loss and total power loss, things like that. It was really a lot of fun and really eye-opening. And when I got back, I thought, well, I'm gonna tell Vimco, my insurance company, that I did this, this training, which was pretty expensive, over two grand. Um, but worth it again. And I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll call a Vimco and tell them I, I trained here and maybe they'll give me 50 bucks off. Well, I, I told them I trained, I trained there, sent them the certificate, my training certificate, and I uh, got back a letter saying, we're discounting your insurance by $450 a year. So uh, I was really, um, and it didn't pay for the training, but it definitely, every little bit helped. So I was, I was impressed with that and again, Aircraft simulator training in Burnett, Texas. I really highly recommend them. Uh, as far as uh, maintenance goes, uh, I don't foresee any other major issues this year. Touch wood or touch aluminum. Uh, I am, I guess the kind of the big news is I've booked in the airplane for December at Air Impressions in Waco because I'm done with the maintenance shop I've used here in Houston, except for one. There's one at Hooks that I, that I like for uh, getting kind of minor things repaired, but uh, I'm not going to implicate the shop that I've been using, but uh, they changed ownership and the kind of attention to detail has really gone downhill. A um, couple things, for example, my plane came out of annual this year and the battery was flat. And I asked them to service my landing gear struts and there was about an inch of chrome showing on my main landing gear struts. Like it was, the airplane looked like a low rider. It was sitting like this while it was being uh, towed. Long story short, Air Impressions and TSA, uh, TAS Aviation are the two shops in the US that are really, that I'm aware of, that are really uh, premier twin Cessna shops. So Air Impressions in Waco, Texas, taking the plane there, I'm nervous. It's probably going to be a lot of money to get the plane annual there, but I think it's worth it. I don't think it will be expensive every year. I think they'll probably discover a bunch of stuff that wasn't done right, and I'll have a huge bill, but then the airplane will be good to go for a decade. Um, what makes me nervous about it, on the forums, there was a gentleman that just bought a 310, and he took it in there and he ended up with a $60,000 annual bill. And that can happen with these planes. I mean, if they find cracks in the in the in the landing gear wheel well, there's something called the side brace kit that they would have to add. That can be, you know, that's a significant chunk of change. Um, Kevin Thornton, 310 pilot. I mean, he detailed one of his videos finding cracks in his wing skin. Um, so, 
you know, there's all sorts of things that could be lurking in these expensive airplanes. Because as I mentioned before, these are really, if these planes were built today, they'd be one and a half million dollars. So they really do have bills. Even though you can go buy a 310 for $150,000 now, they, the bills are like a million dollar airplane bills. So anyway, I'm kind of rambling on, but uh, that that is um, the status of the airplane. Uh, everything's going well so far. I guess I'm slightly nervous about fuel prices as well. It's definitely gonna reduce the number of hours I fly this year. Another quick update, um, I mentioned a long time ago in one of my videos that I am building an RV-10, a Vans RV-10, because when I'm retired, I have two concerns. One, will I be able to afford to run the 310 in retirement? And two, will I be able to find a mechanic or a maintenance shop to work on my airplane? So I am, I've taken the plunge, um, been working on it for a little over a year now. The empanage kit is done, it's in storage. The um, I received the wing kit in, I think it was late March. I've built the left flap. It's finished and in storage now, and I'm working on the right flap. And I should have that done here this month. And then I'm gonna do the ailerons, and then the leading edge and the fuel tank and the wings, and then put that in storage, and then I'll keep going. So um, realistically, I'm five to seven years away from having that flying, so. The 310 will be around for a while, which is kind of why I'm going to invest in taking it to air impressions and really getting some qualified eyes on it. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good summer. Um, I don't 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 despair about fuel prices. I know it's tough right now, but um, I work in oil and gas and we are trying to increase the number of rigs and start drilling again. So hopefully... Uh, will bring fuel prices down, but we're just struggling with supply chain issues like everybody else, even just finding people to run rigs is difficult, but uh, the, the cure for high oil prices is high oil prices, so this should fix itself, so stay chipper. Thanks guys, have a good day, and happy flying.